It's essential to use the right lighting for a planted tank, otherwise you may end up with algae. This video covers the basics of lighting systems for beginners. As always, my recommendations are in the kit.co co link in the description down below. There are two types of lighting available for planted tanks, fluorescent lighting and LED lighting. Fluorescent lighting is an old school lighting system with years of proven results. It works exceptionally well for growing aquatic plants and is widely available. Fluorescent lighting uses T5 bulbs, and these T5 bulbs are also relatively inexpensive in the short term and can provide a wider spectrum of light compared to LEDs. On the other hand, LEDs offer greater flexibility with the ability to control light intensity. This allows for a gradual on and off system that mimics dawn and dusk. Various lights can be tuned to produce different colors to complement your tank. LEDs offer a more modern design, will be more energy efficient in the long run, and will last a lot longer than fluorescent. However, LEDs can suffer from poor light spectrum design, which can make it more difficult to stimulate the reds in red plants. There are many reliable manufacturers that offer full spectrum LEDs. In addition to choosing the right type of lighting for your tank, it is also important to ensure that you have the right light intensity. The intensity of light is defined as how bright a light source is. The amount needed for a planted tank can vary depending on the type of plants you are keeping and the size of the aquarium. Generally, 2-5 to five watts per gallon is sufficient for planted tanks. However, there is more to consider. The typical way to measure intensity in an aquarium is to measure the photosynthetically active radiation values at specific points. Low light or low tech plants such as crypts, Anubias and Java Fern typically grow slower and require a lower light intensity to prevent algae growth. Medium to high tech plants need more intensity due to their rapid growth rate and need for CO2. So be sure to accommodate for the types of plants you want to grow. Be on the lookout for any PAR data provided by manufacturers or by a third party. This data will help determine the strength of the light. If the tank is still too deep, reflectors, raising the substrate level, using low light plants, or having a multi-light system may be your solution. In conjunction with light intensity, it is also important to consider the photoperiods for your planted tank. Photoperiod is the amount of time the lights are on and off throughout the day. A typical photo period for a planted tank is around 7-8 to eight hours. You can keep them on longer, but it's important to avoid excess lighting and intensity, as this can lead to algae growth. Experiment with the duration. I found that 7-6 or six hours works for me. However, there is one very important thing to consider. The lights need to be on and off at the exact same time every day. If they're on by even a few minutes, you may spawn algae. Mate, how do I even do that? I sometimes forget to turn them on. I've got the thing just for you. Introducing electrical timers. These bad boys have the ability to turn lights on and off at the exact same time you set them. Gone are the days where you have to remember to turn them on. You may have heard lights referred to as a 6500K light. This is known as the temperature for a light. This doesn't refer to how much heat a light produces, but rather its color appearance and is measured in degrees Kelvin. Lower light temperatures appear more warm and yellow. Higher temps appear more cool and blue. Contrary to popular belief, light temperature does not significantly affect the growth of aquatic plants. Here is a comparison between two 6500K lights. The left is the Geisman Tropic T5 tubes, and the right is the Fluvoplan 3.0. Both have the same Kelvin values, but have different spectrum distributions. For reference, here is a spectrum distribution graph for sunlight. Spectrum distribution is the main source that affects plant growth. If the manufacturer posts this data, you want to look for a spectrum that has balanced RGB colors. A lack in one of these areas may lead to difficult plant growth. For example, this graph shows a weakness in the reds. This will result in washed out visuals and poor red coloration in plants despite plants still being able to grow. This is the usual case when it comes down to white only LEDs. On the other hand, this spectrum lacks the blue, thus presenting a yellowish tone but gives greater plant growth results. Spectrum is something to think about, but it's not a make it or break it variable. As a beginner, don't worry about the technicalities of spectrum distribution. Instead, focus on the build quality, light intensity, and photo period. Having full control over these three features will greatly help in preventing or battling algae. High-end lighting systems provide all three of these features, but they come at a higher price. You can also gain full control over cheaper lights. You may not get the build quality of higher-end lighting, but you can still have control over the photo period and intensity through the purchase of additional items. There are some lights in the description ranging from economic to godlike. 
Providing adequate lighting for your tank is essential to keep your plants healthy and thriving. Hopefully, this guide has provided a helpful introduction to aquarium lighting for planted tanks. If you're interested in low-tech plants which you can pair with your lighting system, watch this video where I discuss 10 of them.